Hey Diamond Painting friends, Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder, stopping in to share a quick video for those of you who are brand new to diamond painting. Now, diamond painting has really taken off in popularity over the last couple of years, even more so during the pandemic, and it's so exciting to see so many of you week after week who tell me in the comments, I don't even have my first canvas yet, but I'm so excited to get started. Guys, this one is for you. Now, if you're a seasoned veteran at diamond painting, this is also for you because I'm showing you a brand new artist release today from our friends at DIY Moon Shop. This canvas is called Thorn Angel by their brand new artist collaborator, Nene Thomas. Nene Thomas is a fantasy artist, as you can tell from my Thorn Angel here. And because I'm an affiliate for DIY Moon, I received this canvas and some of the accessories that I'm gonna show you today free from DIY Moon so I could show it to you. As part of that affiliate relationship, I will put an affiliate link in the description below. That means when I show you products that I receive from DIY Moon and you purchase those products using that link and when you enter code Tiny Worlds of Wonder in the coupon bar at checkout, I receive a small commission for referring you. So. That's never, ever a requirement here on the channel, but I wanna make sure you know about that relationship right up front, and if you wish to support the channel, that is a great way to do it. Today what I wanna do is show you everything that came in this package from DIY Moon. If you're brand new to diamond painting and you don't have the gazillion tools accumulated that you normally see here on YouTube that are associated with diamond painting, we're gonna talk about some things that you can use as you kind of step up your diamond painting game a little bit. And then we might even get started on a little of this canvas today. So first I wanna show you what came with this canvas. So of course, with every diamond painting canvas, you're gonna get the canvas itself. This is the DIY Moon canvas layout. It's a soft lint canvas with heat surging around the edges. It has one legend down at the bottom, like thus. It has poured glue, which just means a liquid glue has been applied to the canvas after the image was printed, and then this protective clear cover was laid down on top. All canvases from DIY Moon are poured glue like this. That makes them really durable in shipping, and you guys, at this point, that's really the only kind of canvas that I buy. Now, when you get your canvas, you don't have to do anything to it. Roll it out, let it relax a little bit. Sometimes you'll see us YouTubers pull the cover back and then flatten it down again. Sometimes that's just to get the sheen off the cover of the canvas so that you can see it on camera a little bit better, but it's not required at all to do that. You'll also get in a DIY Moonshot canvas your bag with your drills in it. Usually that's tucked down in the middle. These are pre-bagged drills, which means the drills have arrived in resealable bags. I love this because you don't have to have any containers or any kind of special tools. You can rock and roll right out of the bag. These drills also came with a legend so you can see what color code these have. Diamond paintings use normally a standard set of colors the symbols on each canvas for each color might change depending on the company and the image, but this bar here, this column that says DMC, those are like DMC thread colors for cross stitching. So those are fairly standardized colors. They may vary by dye lot a little bit, but those are, if you're gonna catalog and save your spare drills, those are the numbers that you're gonna want to use to do the cataloging. The only exception to this is Diamond Dots canvases. They use their own proprietary drill numbering system, but most of the other major reputable companies use this DMC system, and that makes it really handy to not toss all that plastic in the garbage. You can use it for other projects later on. I also received in this shipment some toolkits. DIY Moon is always very generous with their toolkits, so I got a ton of pink wax. I could do this with a friend because I got two sets of tweezers, two sets of pens with a three-placer on the end. I'll show you all about how to use those in a second. I also got a free gift with some stickers. 
which is always fun. Now this canvas, because we're celebrating a brand new artist today, this came with some perks that I can show you. The perks I'm gonna show you today may not still be available depending on when you're watching this video. So there's a week one promo, a week two promo, a week three promo, but I really want this video to stand the test of time pretty well. So I'll show these to you, but I'll direct you to the DIY Moon Shop website so you can see what promos are active at the time you're viewing this. So this awesome package came with a free fuzzy purse, which is really cute. It also came with this really awesome dragon necklace. This also came with some nesting drill trays. If you're familiar with Distracted by Diamonds, these are exactly the style of drill tray that come with those kits. And then in celebration of this release, this canvas also came with a special treatment. Now this special treatment for New diamond painters can be so confusing. So I wanna share with you what this is, what this means. A special treatment just means an optional embellishment pack. So normal, regular diamond painting drills look something like this. These are round drills. Drills come in round and square. These happen to be round. Special drills might be something a little bit different. This package came with an optional free AB310, which you can see is less black than kind of green. It's got kind of a peacock, very shiny coating on it. The special treatment for this canvas came with silver metallic drills and a big red crystal that you can stick right on her corset here. <laughs> <laughs> so you can really bling her out. This also came with some directions. So the special treatment for Thorn Angel says, gem, use on red gem on corset, and then silver, use on silver accent on corsets and cuffs. Now you guys, you do have to place these yourself and figure out where they go, but do not be intimidated by this. You can reposition drills to some degree. So if you do all of your regular drills here and you decide you want to bling this out with a line of silver where it looks good to your eye, you can pull those regular drills off and add those. You don't want to do it over and over and over and over, but it's definitely okay to do that a couple of times as you get your embellishment situated the way you want it to be. And then with these free AB beads that just came in the regular drills, in my regular bag of drills, this says, you have the option to do the following. Use all ABs on charted areas, so you can substitute all the 310 in this canvas if you want to, which just means all of the letter E, and you can make every black drill an AB if you want to, or you can sprinkle them, use mostly the regular beads, and use ABs sparingly to simply highlight certain areas of your painting, or you can use all regular beads and skip the ABs altogether. So one thing I love about DIY Moon is that you really have all kinds of options to make the canvas your own. Let's get started on this canvas a little bit. So anytime I do a spotlight where I know I'm not gonna work this canvas up immediately and I'm just gonna work together with you on a section, I'm gonna pick a section I really like. So I'm gonna pick, of course, the focal point of this and we'll see what we can do with this. So the first thing you have to contend with when you're getting started is your clear cover. How do I just reveal a section of this sticky canvas to work on? There are a couple things you could do. Because this canvas is pretty small, I probably could just peel back this top section, work on this area and lay it back down. On a small canvas, that works just fine. Most of my canvases are like 60 by 80 centimeters, much bigger than this 40 by 50. So that doesn't work so well on the large canvases. My favorite thing to do is to take some plain old regular yellow masking tape and make some grid lines on this. Now, for today's video, this is very strange, but I happen to be completely out of regular masking tape because I use so much masking tape, but I do happen to have some printed masking tape in my stash. So if you just have yellow masking tape on hand, use that, that is not a problem. I happen to have some printed stuff. This is, this is fancier than I might normally get, but it's gonna work the same way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is 
I am going to run, now I'm not too precise about this, I have to say. I'm gonna just make some cutting lines for myself. I don't want to just cut the clear cover of this canvas with scissors because these clear covers tear so easily. It's kind of a mess. So I'm just gonna run some sections. And like I said, if I was doing plain old masking tape, I would do the exact same procedure. How big a section I do and how far apart my lines are, it really depends on how much time I have to work. Honestly, you guys, it, it doesn't matter that much because I'm gonna lay the section back. I'm gonna lay the clear cover back down if I don't finish a section. So for me, a square about like this will take about one sitting. I know that because I've been diamond painting for a while, but if you're new, just experiment. There's, there's really not a way you can go wrong with the size of your sections, and I'll show you why in a minute. Now, I'm gonna do something a little bit weird here because I, I normally would just run this like this. What I'm gonna do is actually section this off a little differently because I wanna work on her face and I know I want to. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna form, I'm gonna form a little frame over here for her face so I can work on that. Maybe go something like that for this top one. There really are no rules for this. There's no rules for where you start. You can start at the bottom, top, sides. It's really whatever is convenient for you. There's no way to go wrong. Okay, so normally I would lay this all out in grids. And like I said, I'm gonna have a little fun with her face here today. So now that I've done this gridding procedure with my masking tape, I'm just gonna take a plain old regular pair of scissors. I'm gonna lift up that clear cover and I'm gonna cut roughly along the center of my masking tape. Is it possible to cut through your canvas? It is, so just be careful. Make sure you've got the clear cover. It's not rocket science, but you know, I've had things happen to me. Okay, so we'll go like that. Now what I can do is have a little working section here. Now the next thing I have to do before I start is to figure out what drills I'm gonna need. Normally, and I have done this on this canvas already, what I'm gonna do is take my bags. So here's some of the colors from the face that I know I'm gonna need. I'm gonna look at this DMC number on the bag, 152. I'm gonna look and see what symbol that was on my canvas. So 152 was Y. And then you can see I just wrote the letter Y on my bag. So every time I see a symbol Y on my canvas, that's the color drill I'm gonna lay down. I repeated that with all of my colors. And for this canvas with 36 colors, it took me about five minutes was all. Now if you wanna step up your diamond painting, you can put all of these colors into containers with lids you can close and use a little dot of masking tape to put the symbol on top of your containers for each one. Here's an example of a set of containers where I've done that very simple procedure. So I've just put the symbol from my canvas. This is that DMC number. That way, if I store these with my spare drills, I know exactly what color I need. But that is not required at the beginning for DIY Moon because these have pre-bagged drills, so you can just use those drills right out of the bag. So after I've labeled all my bags, it's time to jump into the actual diamond painting. Now you can see that procedure did not take very long at all. I'm just gonna use all the stuff that came in this kit. So I'm gonna grab one of my pens, I'm gonna grab my white boat that came with the kit, and I'm gonna load up my pen with wax. All I'm gonna do is press that end of that pen into the wax maybe three four five times until I can tell I've got some wax down in the end of my pen I'm gonna do the same thing with my multi placer I'm just gonna sink that down into the wax maybe twice and we're ready to roll that's all there is to it 
Now, I'm gonna pick a color to start with first. Her lips are bright red, so let's go for that. Let's go for bright red. I'm gonna peel my cover back. Now, if you are brand new to diamond painting and you don't have what's called a cover minder, which is basically a magnet sandwich that you stick above and below to hold that back, grab your scissors or grab some other heavy, heavier object and just lay that on the canvas. Now I'm gonna pick up a drill and I'm gonna set it on the corresponding number. Okay, so. Just like that. Now when you first get started, you might notice you put your drills down a little bit crooked because it takes a little bit of practice to center those over the symbols perfectly. So that's what these tweezers are for. Just take the cap off your tweezers, position things the way you want, you're off to the races. You'll get better and better at it as time goes on. So with those four drills, her lips are completely done. I'm just gonna dump those back in my bag seal that back up with as little air in it as possible to reduce static. And I'm just gonna roll through some other colors here. So I pulled all of these out because I knew these were colors we were gonna need for her face. So I'm dump some into my boat and give this a little shake because I want those to flatten out a little bit. And this is number four. So I'm gonna hit all of my number four is that I can see around her face. Now normally when I'm picking which color to start with, I work from my darker tones to my lighter tones normally, but it doesn't matter at all which number you start with. You just start with a color that you like and go for it. Some people say start with the color you see the most of, some people start with the lightest drills, some people with the darkest. Now, if looking down like this over a long period of time starts to bother your neck, I know it does mine, you can invest in a tabletop easel, which brings your work up at an angle, and that can be really, really helpful. I'll link a video up in the cards where I talk about that option. If you're struggling to see these very, very small symbols, you can also invest in something called a light pad, which lays under your canvas and shines light up through the canvas and it just makes everything a little easier to see. That can really be an eye saver. DIY Moon tends to have a lot of what's called in diamond painting lingo confetti, which just means different colors scattered all over, not a lot of big blocks of color. This process of working darker to lighter, which I'm not following very well right now, but, but it is a good procedure, that'll make this confetti game a little bit easier to manage. And you guys, this is all there is to diamond painting. This is all there is to it. It's a very, very easy craft. It's a very, very fun craft. It's a very, very zen craft. And I love it so much. So once you do a little diamond painting, you might realize that these, these tools, the basic tools, maybe just aren't quite enough for you. They're great, you can do a whole canvas. I did multiple, multiple canvases with this setup when I first started diamond painting. If you're like, uh, I already know I love this, I wanna graduate into something a little bit, a little bit more advanced, you might purchase a hand-turned resin diamond painting pen. These usually retail for somewhere between like the low $30 range to the $60 range. It really, really depends on who you're buying from. But Etsy is the very, very best place to buy these. And you, if you search hand-turned diamond painting pen, you will find a gazillion options. So I pulled one out of my stash. They're super fun to collect. I'm just gonna load this up with some wax and I'm gonna carry on with this bad boy because I just find it so much more comfortable to work with. You can also find these larger white boats on AliExpress. This is absolutely the only kind of thing that I ever recommend buying on AliExpress. Basically every canvas on AliExpress is unlicensed and features a stolen image that's ripped off from some artist. So I would not shop for diamond paintings there, but you can get 
a big set of these large white boats very inexpensively over there. And that's one thing that I think really makes diamond painting more fun is to have a bigger boat like this. I'm gonna use the same procedure as I did with the small boat. Just get everything shaken until it's roughly flat. Just a quick tip, I sometimes set the bag I'm using off to my right hand side, just so if I forget momentarily what symbol I'm looking for, I can just look over and find it. I do the same thing with my containers. So here's a little closer view of what I'm actually doing, guys. Here's my DMC number here, 838. That's that number I was talking about that's kind of standard um, or more or less standard among the various diamond painting companies with a few exceptions. This number five is the symbol on my canvas. So that's the actual symbol I'm looking for here when I'm working. So I'm just placing these dark brown drills on that number. A couple other things to keep in mind as you're working. If you're struggling to get your diamonds kind of straight, one tip I can give you is to sort of look for groups of fours. So for example, if I'm gonna set down this drill right here, I'm gonna look at these three others and see if I can get that one to form a perfect square or a more or less perfect square. <laughs> Being exact is not the be all end all of diamond painting. I do find if your drills are more or less straight, you are gonna have a better end result, but that's one thing that you can watch for, especially with rounds, which I actually find a little bit harder to get straight sometimes than squares. Okay guys, so I have all of her shoulders and face finished, and you can see when I pull my camera back that some magic really does happen. Things were looking a little crazy up close, but when I pulled back, it looks much, much more blended. Now, in the spirit of full disclosure, cameras do flatten colors a bit, so it looks a bit more blended on my camera than it probably will in real life. I'm gonna go ahead and dive into some of these AB310. I'm gonna make that kind of this little halo thing or whatever, whatever this is going on out here. I'm gonna make this a little AB, so um, I might just go for it. I'm just gonna add some, and like I said, if, if I don't love it, Nothing in diamond painting is permanent. I don't wanna pull these up like 18 times and redo them because my canvas will get a little less sticky every time I remove drills and replace them. So that's something to be aware of. I'm gonna kinda of try to follow the outline of the dark drills. There's a symbol I, a symbol G, and a symbol E that are all pretty dark. And I'm just gonna kinda of take the lead from the charting. I'd say at first, take a less is more approach. You can always go back and add some more stuff. I personally think ABs fit certain styles of canvas much better than others. When I'm doing like old masters canvases, I, I pretty much never use ABs because to me it just doesn't fit the vibe of the artwork itself. Now my pen is starting to lose its stick a little bit. I did all of that with the wax I had in my pen. So if that happens, just take your pen and stick it back down in your wax a couple times. Another trick I sometimes do when I'm placing ABs is to actually look in my camera, <laughs> take some pictures, look at the pictures, because I can kind of tell a little better than when I'm just sitting in front of the canvas where those ABs might look good. There is really no wrong answer here though, you guys. You really just get to personalize this canvas the way you want. That can sound scary at first, but Really, once you get going on it, it is so much fun to do. Once you get a little more practiced at your diamond painting, you might want to start using your multi-placers. So those are these long placers on the end of your pen. The original pen came with a three-placer. So you can set down three at a time with that one. On this pen, I happen to have a six-placer. There's not going to be too many places on a DIY moon where I can place six drills in a row, normally, of the same color. Now when I place these ABs, I'm not even necessarily just placing them on the 310. I'm placing them on basically every symbol in the area I want to be AB. 
I'm just trying to make a shape that makes sense. And like I said, if I don't like it, I'll pull it up and put some regular drills on there. And I can do that once or twice with no problem. Okay guys, I'm gonna carry on with this a little bit longer and I'll catch you when I've done a little more of the image. Okay guys, I'm gonna to have to hang it up there for today. I'm so sad, I don't want to, but other adult things are calling my name this afternoon. So if you're like me and you have to take a break in the section you're working on with your diamond painting, all you have to do is fold this plastic cover back down over the top to keep your work safe and protected. You never wanna take this plastic cover completely off your diamond painting and then leave it off. You for sure don't want to leave your adhesive exposed to the elements. So make sure you fold that back down over the top. I'm gonna go off, like I said, and do some adulting for the day. I hope this was really helpful for you. If you're brand new, you're just getting started in the world of diamond painting, you've never seen a DIY moon, you're experiencing your first special treatment. I hope all of this was helpful to you. If you're interested in this canvas, make sure you visit the link in the description below. Like I said, that is an affiliate link. However, that does really, really help to offset the cost of filming videos, the many, many hours that it takes to edit and post videos. So that's all really, really appreciated. If you wanna see more content like this where I introduce you to new products, give you some how-tos, get you started in diamond painting and other crafts, make sure you click the subscribe button and turn on the notifications. I hope you have a wonderful week. As always, spread some joy wherever you are and I'll catch you next time. Bye.